In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the laziest way to sharpen any knife to razor sharp. This is not a clickbait title, this is actually the fastest method to sharpen any knife to razor sharp that I've ever encountered. So this is a dull knife and I want it to be a sharp knife and using this method I'm now going to quickly sharpen up in under one minute so that it's razor sharp. Now that it's done you can see I can shave my leg hair with it and it easily passes the paper test. Now that is pretty much razor sharp. This method isn't just for sharpening small pocket knives, you can also put the finishing edge on useful tools like lathe chisels and wood chisels, make them really sharp as well. On top of that you can sharpen kitchen knives really easily, or larger knives such as tomahawks and swords. Now I'm going to show you how to set this up and actually sharpen the knives properly, then I'm going to explain some of the disadvantages and advantages of this method and compare this to other methods such as whetstones or commercial knife sharpeners. So wait to the end of the video before you ask any questions in the comments down below. So for this sharpening method to work you're going to need three main things. The first thing is going to be a bench grinder or some other rotary tool which is able to spin up a disc to quite a high velocity. You could also use something like a drill press or just a power drill. If you don't already have something like this, this is going to be the most expensive thing you're going to have to buy. But you can get a really cheap bench grinder for about 20 quid that will work absolutely perfectly. And I'll put a link in the description down below to one on Amazon. The next thing you're going to need is some sort of disc made from wood, and I'm going to be making this from plywood. This is what's actually going to spin and sharpen the knife. My bench grinder is made for 150mm grinding discs, so I'm going to be making this 15cm in diameter. It just so happened that I have an elm circle for my lathe which is 15cm in diameter so I just use that to mark out the circle. I'm using some very cheap 18mm interior grade plywood and the grade of the plywood doesn't really matter as long as it's not the really really rubbish stuff and as long as it's not warped. I use a jigsaw to cut out the shape of the disc. You could do this with any other hand tool. It's just easiest with a jigsaw since it can cut the corners. You don't have to be very precise as long as you roughly just stay on the outside of the lines. We're going to true it all up later. The setup in this method is the most time consuming part, it took me about 15 minutes to get this all set up and it might take you a little bit longer if you don't have the power tools, however once it's set up you can sharpen absolutely tons of knives each one in about a minute so it still outperforms any other method. I then drill a hole straight through the centre which is going to allow it to fit onto the shaft of my bench grinder. Now it's time to turn it true so that it doesn't vibrate the bench grinder too much and so the surface that is rotating that you're going to sharpen the knife on is completely flat. So in my bench vise I clamp in a piece of metal round bar which I can use as a rest that I can rest my chisel on and start to remove the material very gently. Just using a wood chisel and I'm basically treating this as a wood lathe and it works really well to remove material and leave a very smooth surface. I carry on removing material until there's basically completely flat all the way around. Then one very important thing that I do is take my bench grinder and I spin it around so that it's facing in the other direction. This is very important and I'll show you why. You want the surface of the plywood buffing wheel to be spinning away from the edge of the knife so that as it comes over it buffs the edge of the knife but the knife doesn't catch no matter what angle you put it at. If you have it spinning towards the knife, as soon as you put the knife on, if it's relatively sharp, it's just going to cut straight into the plywood and it's going to fire the knife straight at you. And that's going to be really dangerous and it, you could really injure yourself if that happened. So make sure that it's facing in the right direction. So the next step is to apply some buffing compound to the surface of the buffing wheel that we've just made. As it is, the plywood isn't hard enough to cut through the metal and polish the edge. However, this buffing compound contains tiny pieces of abrasive that are literally like a couple of microns big and they will help buff the knife to a mirror finish by just removing tiny amounts of the hardened steel and actually the buffing compound is really easy to get a hold of any metal working shops will have it or any polishing shops will have it and I'll put a link again in the description down below to this buffing compound which works great once the surface of the plywood is charged with the buffing compound it's ready to cut and sharpen the knife and you basically just gently brush the knife along the edge of the buffing wheel and the compound will remove a tiny amount of material and mirror polish the edge of the knife a couple of things that you can do to help get a better finish is apply less pressure and that actually makes the surface of the knife even smoother and you get a sharper knife and also make sure that you hold it at a constant angle on both sides and you'll develop both of these things after a little bit of practice. It's really easy to get the hang of and it's not very difficult at all. So now I'm going to answer some of the most frequently asked questions on my old video that I made on this topic. And one of the main questions is that it's not the laziest way to sharpen a knife since you've got to do all of this setup. 
So to answer that question, you need to think of the main target audience for this method. I say that the main type of people that this method is aimed towards is people who make a lot of knives, or people who use knives or tools like that a lot that need to be sharpened regularly. And if you're using sharp tools like that a lot, you generally have a lot of equipment like bench grinders and plywood and stuff that you can use to set up this method very easily. And you probably have all of the stuff that you need to do this method already, and you won't have to pay anything at all to do it. So this method is ideal for people who need to sharpen a lot of knives, since once you put the initial setup in, it's very easy to sharpen knives. However, if you're someone who just has a knife that you want to sharpen maybe once a year, this probably isn't the method for you. There's easier methods that are quicker to set up, but maybe don't get as good results. Another issue with this method is it's not portable at all. If you want to sharpen a knife, you're going to have to have this entire bench grinder, some buffing compound, and access to a power supply. And you can't do any of that if you're, say, camping, or you're doing a bushcraft survival thing, or anything like that. You might as well just carry a knife sharpener instead. And that brings up another issue about safety. I really wouldn't recommend this to anyone who doesn't really know how to use tools safely and anyone who's not used to using spinning bench grinders or lathes and things like that. If you did manage to get something caught in the spinning wheel, then it could be really dangerous, possibly even fatal with a sharp knife like that. As well, there's also the issue that maybe the wheel would explode. A lot of people thought that that would happen, and in the past I was using an MDF buffing wheel, which would maybe be a little bit sketchy. However, this plywood I think is easily strong enough to hold itself together under these forces, although I wouldn't want to use much faster RPM on my bench grinder. Firstly, there's whetstones, which is by far the most common method for sharpening knives. It's been used for thousands of years, and some people are really good at it and get a super razor sharp knife, probably sharper than any of these knives. I would say in some cases whetstones are better than this method, however in others whetstones are a lot slower and if you want to get high quality ones they can be very expensive. I have this set of whetstones here which cost about £120 for all of them and they are pretty hard to use, you've got to be very skilled and very patient. It takes me about half an hour to sharpen a knife all the way up to a razor sharp whereas here it only takes me one minute. Times when I would recommend using a whetstone over this method is say if you're using a very expensive knife and you don't want to remove a lot of material, this method might be a little bit too aggressive so you might want to end up using a whetstone in the end for that method, even if it does take a lot longer. So then the other method of knife sharpening that a lot of people mentioned a lot was just buying a commercial knife sharpener and some of these can be pretty good but in general the good ones are really expensive and are much more expensive than just buying a bench grinder like this and making something like this which is much easier and on top of that then you also have a bench grinder which is a very useful tool. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video, if you have please hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you want to see more information about this topic, then I do have an older video in it where I may have showed some other information that I haven't mentioned today. However, this video is much better and I'm going to link it in my older video because it's much more informative and answers a lot more questions. If you want to see some of my other videos where I do a lot more making rather than just explaining a method, then just check out my channel and I've got loads of other DIY videos. A lot of them are on knife making as well. If you want recent updates on what I've been doing and more regular updates than just my videos, then check out my Instagram where I post regular updates, and if you want early access to any of these videos, then consider supporting me on Patreon.